The first time I hiked the Snoqualmie Tunnel left me with more questions than answers. My camera picked up a couple of eerie photos, anomalies that I couldn't readily explain. I felt without a doubt that this tunnel had something to communicate, but what was it trying to say? This trail is featured on the top 10 haunted trails list in Washington state, yet so little information was readily available as to why it might be haunted. Why this tunnel leaves one with a distinct impression that regardless of being the only physical presence, one isn't alone. I enjoy digging up the past, and I began to research. It didn't take long for me to exhume the history of this extraordinary trail. I decided to head back to explore more fully, three years after my initial excursion into the tunnel, armed with research, friends, and a field recorder. I didn't know what to expect as we pressed the record button, but when I played back the audio that evening, I heard something. I'm Jill Dell, and this is Tarot on the Trail. I'm an intuitive medium and tarot reader who loves hiking and exploring. Each trail has a story and its own unique energy. I listen as the trails whisper their wisdom and share it with you. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. All aboard! It's the early 1900s and the Iron Horse races are on. The Chicago, Milwaukee, and St. Paul Railroad began planning its own transcontinental railroad system, becoming one of three railroads in the United States to span from east to west. Work began on the Pacific Extension into the Puget Sound area in 1905. Milwaukee Road, as the railroad was often referred to, purchased the existing tracks and land to build its own rail. It was a hefty investment. The line it built crossed five mountain ranges, had 52 tunnels, many bridges, passes, and trestles. One of these mountain passes was the pass at Snoqualmie, connecting Kittius and King Counties. This line was in direct competition with Northern Pacific Railroad's line crossing, and while having the advantage of a shorter route, the line was criticized by many as it also traversed sparsely populated cities along its route. Initially, steam engines were used on the line. The steam engines were fueled by coal. This meant shipping in coal and creating many water and coal depots along the line to service the trains. The line connecting eastern and western Washington was completed using a temporary surface route traveling over the pass. The first passenger train steamed its way into North Bend, March 29, 1909, as the Snoqualmie Tunnel was still under construction. The tunnel, when completed, would allow the trains to cross the pass while avoiding avalanches and the deep Cascade Mountain snow. That original surface route eventually became the eastbound I-90, still used today, and adjacent to the mountain that the 2.3-mile tunnel runs through. One of the stops was in Ketchless, Washington, near Hayak. On August 12, 1912, the Olympian, an all-steel, first-class, luxury passenger train car, departed from Ketchless. The train was pulled by two locomotive engines, and as it was approaching the summit of the Cascade Mountains, Snoqualmie Pass, the forward engine derailed while crossing a wooden bridge that extended over a small stream. The pounding of the wheels over the ties caused the bridge to collapse, and both engines, the mail car and the baggage car, fell into the creek below. Tragically, four crewmen, Two engineers, Mr. Townsend and Mr. Noble, two firemen, Mr. Strimble and Mr. Spencer, who stoked the coal fires, and one passenger, Miss Simon Jurich, lost their lives. Meanwhile, the tunnel's construction, which employed a workforce of 2,500 men, blasted an estimated 12,000 feet of the mountain from each side. The tunnel was barreled all the way through August 5, 1914. The workers then lined the 2.3 miles end-to-end, -end, top to bottom, with concrete reinforcing its strength. The Snoqualmie Tunnel was finished thereafter. Ironically, the first train through the tunnel was carrying the same luxury passenger train, the Olympian, just a short distance from where the derailment tragedy had taken place. Steam trains notoriously have had a difficult time with maintaining speed over the passes especially generating the steam needed during the harsh winter conditions. And in 1915, the company embarked on the huge undertaking of making its lines electric. 
over 3,000 miles of wire would be strung, and a network of substations built along the track to power the system. It was again a very expensive and costly project, yet electric locomotives had the benefit of not causing the black smoke, which blocked the beautiful scenery for passengers, and had the advantage over steam trains when it came to being able to power up steep mountain grades regardless of the season. The Pacific extension of the Milwaukee Road, including subsequent electrification, cost $257 million. And that's not taking into account inflation. Traffic on the line never met projections. And after World War I in the early 1920s, the Milwaukee Road was in serious financial troubles. The electric lines remained in operation until 1973 when the railroad decided to phase out electric trains in favor of diesel locomotives, which at the time were more cost-effective. The Pacific Expansion Line never financially recovered, and the last Milwaukee Road train went through the Snoqualmie Tunnel in 1980. In 1981, Washington State acquired the right-of-way and converted the unused railroad tracks to hiking and cycling trails. The Snoqualmie Tunnel is the longest trail tunnel, not only in Washington, but in the United States. The tunnel itself is located within Iron Horse State Park. The line formerly known as John Wayne Trail is now called the Palouse to Cascades Trail. Since it is open to walkers, hikers, and bikers, there have been many reports of hearing ghostly footsteps, disembodied voices, even reports of being touched. Yet. I uncovered, to the best of my knowledge, no deadly accidents or tragedies in the tunnel itself. However, Catchless Lake is just a short distance up the way from the eastern entrance of the tunnel. And one can speculate that with the completion of the tunnel, that those who perished, tumbling into the creek, may have found a place of solace within the protective darkness of the tunnel. In my initial hike with my son, we captured these eerie photos in 2020. Really needed sunscreen in here. I just totally needed my sunscreen in here. <laughs> and then just recently captured these photo anomalies. End of May 2023. Along with some strange phenomenon. Are you aware that you've passed away? I returned to the tunnel a third time with my friend in early June to capture some additional footage of the tunnel walk itself. It is independently moving. Yeah, that's why I kept stopping and taking video. It is independently moving. Yeah, that's why I kept stopping and taking video. If you're here, could you give us a sign? If that was you, could you do that again? Thank you. I am coming back for some footage for the video that I'm making to tell your stories. And I'd love to speak to you some more. Could it be that the Olympian steams on with its ghostly passengers, ever making its way to Seattle? Let's see what our tarot cards say about the energy here. Today, as we went through the Snoqualmie Tunnel, we're now at the other side of the tunnel, so we were at the halfway point, and I'm just going to do a really quick general reading. Okay, so our first card. Past, three of coins, saffron crocus. 
The coins is a suit of the earth and it represents money, stability, and fertility. Many of the cards represent abundance, security, or wealth without appreciation. Threes in tarot represent the successful completion of a goal. Saffron's the filament from the crocus and is the world's most expensive spice by weight. It continues to be prized across the globe for its flavor and its color as a dye. The Persians took special interest in the purple flower and cultivated it in to what is still used today, which is why the coins on this deck are Persian. This card represents honing one's skills to master craft, material increase, trade, and commerce. My take on this is the significant cost and investment of the railroad in order to make this specific extension a reality. It was and is a marvel, but it came at a great cost. In your own life, in the past, you've made a significant investment of time and energy to reach a goal. Ooh, we got a reverse card. The current. The world verb, quince reverse, represents completion. The goal attained. Quince is the ancestor of both pears and apples. It's speculated that may have been the golden apple in mythology. It represents the beginning and the end of a journey. The reverse meaning is that the journey isn't really over. It's unsatisfactory. The world reverse can signify that you want to fulfill a big goal or complete a big project, but you're not taking all the steps necessary to get there. You may opt for the easiest or quickest path to attain your goal, but it won't lead to the outcome you intended. There are many paths that lead to the same destination. You may need to experience the trials and tribulations along the way so you can learn and grow. And when you do reach your goal, you'll enjoy such a fantastic sense of achievement. Milwaukee Road certainly achieved its goal, but it didn't ever reach its financial goals of stability. And after three bankruptcies, it was bought out in 1985. Remember, the journey to the destination is what brings us wisdom for our future. And speaking of the future, I pulled two cards, the Ace of Swords, Sage, and the Four of Wands, Freak's Grass. Sage, an herb named from the Latin Salvatore, which means in good health, and forms the roots to save and to heal. Its smoke is often used to purify an area of negative energies. The sword is the Roman gladius. Its meaning is pure, unbending idealism, achieving a true inner peace and outer in oneself, the power to love strongly. It is knowledge gained after the hard-won victory. And the Four of Wands, Frigg's Grass, also known as Lady Bedstraw because it was stuffed into mattresses to ward off insects. It's sacred to Frigg, the Norse goddess of home and weaving. The wands are distaffs which are used to spin wool. This represents a house in order with stability, warmth, harmony, prosperity, peace, and the perfected work of these. I take this to mean that after enduring hardships, reaching the goal, that well-deserved victory, a future with harmony and prosperity. The tunnel has whispered its story, filled with triumphs, tragedies, hardships, and then its healing, an outcome providing a blissful escape to all who seek his solitude. While I'm convinced that the Snoqualmie Tunnel holds spirits, enjoying their solitude and refuge, found deep in the cool echoing darkness of its walls, disturbed only now and again as hikers and cyclists pass through. Thank you for coming along for the ride. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you check out the videos listed at the end. I'll also put in a list of my gear used in the description. Until next time, this is Jill Dell with Tarot on the Trail. Haunted Trails.